Hey there, welcome to the Social Media in Central Canada podcast for March 3rd, 2011. This is episode 3 and it's coming at you from sunny but frosty Winnipeg, Manitoba. My name is Jill Lampy, I'm your host, and let's talk about social media. Alright, so here we are, episode number three of the Social Media in Central Canada podcast. My name is Jill Lampy, and I'm a social media strategist and overall technical consultant. My company name is WebGirl Enterprises, and I'm pretty easy to connect with up online. If you'd like to get connected, or if you've got questions, I'd love to hear from you. Now, since the airing of episode number two in the middle of February, there's been a lot of activity around here, and a lot of, you guessed it, social networking. I was able to conduct a couple of interviews on the social media front and I'm looking forward to sharing them with you today. So here's a big shout out to Matt Shepard who leads the Social Media Manitoba Tweet Up Meetup group and Aileen White, the creative spark and planner behind the Winnipeg Humane Society's viral video uh, featuring Winnipeg's own Andy Hill. But before I get into the interviews, I'd like to take a quick look at the social media events I know of that are coming up in the city of Winnipeg. If you've got an event that wasn't mentioned, make sure you join the Social Media Manitoba group on LinkedIn and share the event with everybody. March 9th, 2011 is the Social Media Manitoba Tweet Up Meetup's first meetup, although people have been connecting through Twitter for about a month already too. It's being held at the Tavern United at the MTS Center and it starts after work on Thursday the 9th at 6pm. I will be there. May 4th at the Victoria Inn here in Winnipeg, the Manitoba Quality Network is holding the 2011 Excellence Conference and the keynote speaker is none other than Mitch Joel, the digital marketing guru who hosts the Six Degrees of Separation podcast and has published a book by the same name. The March 6, 2011 episode of the Six Degrees of Separation podcast is one I'm looking forward to myself. Mitch has a 40-minute interview with Seth Godin, and out of all the gurus out there, I have to admit Seth Godin is my favorite, and I tune out most of the rest. So if you're into Seth Godin like I am and aren't already listening to Mitch Joel's podcast, make sure to subscribe to it today. If your lunchtime schedule is flexible, you might want to check out the social media and technology meetup group from meetup.com. As with most groups, they meet once a month, but this one meets over lunch at Teddy's Restaurant at the Viscount Gore, instead of after work like a lot of meetups. And while it's not specified as a social media meetup, I'm always happy to put the word out about the Secret Handshake Creative Society meetup headed by Leanne Havelock. There's lots of freelancers and freak thinkers there, and I've had a really great time despite despite the bad weather trying to keep me from going. The next secret handshake meetup in the middle of March is actually the one the group's one year anniversary, and I hear Leanne is out networking rather feverishly to make it a fun event for everyone who comes out. In fact, I think she's looking for sponsors, so if you'd like to get your company name out in front of a bunch of these energetic Winnipeg creative professionals, head over to secrethandshake.ca and get in touch with Leanne. Be sure to say that Jill sent you from her podcast. Up next, I had the opportunity to talk to Matt Shepard from Canada's web shop about the social media Manitoba tweet up meetup that he recently started up and that's having its first meetup on Thursday, March the 9th. I'm going to this event myself, so be sure to come say hello and let me know you heard this podcast. And it's pretty new, so I'd like to know who's listening. But first, I'd like to take some time to talk about the presentation I went to last week at the New Media Manitoba building on Waverly here in Winnipeg. It was a talk entitled Voir QR, and I mentioned it in episode two of this podcast as something that was coming up. Erica Glazier hosted the presentation following many hours and long nights researching and gathering a whole lot of information about QR codes, that is, quick recognition or quick response codes. And I tell you, I learned a lot about those little barcodes that night. 
Erica's presentation was really well done, packed with great information and delivered through well thought out and very beautifully designed presentation slides, and it was really entertaining as well. There was about 75 of us at that presentation, and from what I recall, the first 20 signups took place within two hours of registration opening uh, being announced on Twitter. There were 40 people signed up within about the first 24 hours, and I think that's mainly from the Twitterverse since Erica is so active there. It was great to see that happen for a local event, and I met a whole bunch of new people that night too. If you were there and I didn't get a chance to shake your hand, beat me on Twitter and let's figure out when we'll be at the same meetup next. Alright, I've delayed enough. Let's get on to the interview portion of the podcast. Later on in the show, we've got Aileen White from the Winnipeg Humane Society sharing the stories behind the Kitten Madness video that was posted on their channel in January of this year and has already had over 400,000 views. But first, let's hear what Matt Shepard had to say about the creation of the Social Media Manitoba Tweet Up Meetup group meeting for the first time on March 9th. Social Media Manitoba, the Tweet Up, actually uh, only started a few weeks few weeks back uh, in actually setting up the meetup group. This is an extension of uh, a group I set up on LinkedIn, um, Social Media Manitoba group there. And, and really the purpose of that group was to share all the new and exciting things that are going on in social media, but specifically to talk about what's happening in social media in Manitoba. Um, I quite often meet uh, business owners that are really excited and want to get involved in social media but don't know what other people in the province are doing with it. And they quite often ask the question, you know, well, how can I make this geographically relevant? I don't necessarily want to talk to the world. It's kind of cool that I can, um, but how do I figure out what people around me are doing? Um, so with that in mind, I set up social media Manitoba. I uh, started the Manitoba Monday ha hashtag on Twitter um, to try and give... Uh, pretty much anybody in, interested in social media in the province a way to connect with each other, learn from each other, um, figure out what events are going on locally. Um, so that LinkedIn group really took off. I, would, I think now we've got several hundred members, members on there. Um, and, and lots of different topics are being talked about, uh, you know, Facebook and LinkedIn itself, uh, Twitter, um, up and coming trends, uh, events, uh, people post uh, social media jobs on there. Too. Um, so lots of buzz, lots of interest, and, uh, and lots of people, uh, you know, talking to each other about social media and, and, you know, how they're using it, which was really my, my whole aim for it. Um, so then I thought, well, you know, it's great. Social media is, is a great way to connect with people online, but to be most effective, you really want to get in front of those people too, especially as it's kind of a, a geographically targeted thing that it's, you know, everybody within a, a few hours drive of, uh, of where you are. So uh, let's let's do a tweet up. Let's get those people there in front of each other and talking and, and you know, they can really sit down and, and chat about, you know, how they're using social media and, and how it benefits their business or, you know, how it benefits their day-to-day -day lives. Uh, so that's, that's where the tweet up uh, came from. It kind of shut off from uh, the LinkedIn group. And what I'm, I'm kind of hoping to do is, as I say, it's going to be, you know, a real life networking event. Uh, people will be able to put, uh, faces to names. And, uh, I'm also hoping to have a few people, uh, kind of lead discussion, uh, through, through the tweet up. And um, might not be so much a formal presentation as, as people who, you know, are, are very involved with social media talking to large groups about, you know, how they're using it. Um, one example is uh, Jeanette Mattens. Uh, she works with the Winnipeg Foundation, and uh, she helps manage their social media presence. Uh, so, as a nonprofit, uh, you know she has a lot of knowledge about how to use social media uh, for nonprofit uh, organizations. So, I think there'll be quite a few people at the, the tweet up that would be interested in that, and uh, hoping that uh, they'll be able to learn something from her. Um, yeah, and I'm talking to a few other people as well uh, to kind of lead to maybe some kind of similar discussion. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how the first tweet up goes and, and how that format goes and, uh, and build from there. After being to five or six meetups over the past few months myself, I've started to notice how the choice of venue really makes a big difference when it comes to letting the tribe mingle. If the room is too small, too noisy, or makes group conversation difficult, it can hold people back from connecting. 
I asked Matt to talk a little bit more about the location for this first meetup, Tavern United in the MTS Center in downtown Winnipeg, which was apparently chosen by group vote. Starting after work, so around 6 o'clock, um, we're, we're going to have it in Tavern United, I believe we'll be upstairs there. Um, they're going to give us that space and uh, yeah, we'll test it out and see how the space works. But I believe there's been a few tweet ups uh, before and everyone has really good things to say about it. I kind of wanted a central location that uh, had food for after work and, uh, and also something that uh, would kind of allow a bit more discussion rather than a really noisy location. So I've checked out, there's no moose game that night, so we, we should be good. One more thing before we close off with Matt here about the March 9th Social Media Manitoba Tweet Up Meetup at Tavern United in the, U in the MTS Center. I asked him to let us know about how people can find him using Google just in case they had a strange phobia about typing in meetup.com itself. Social Media Manitoba is both on LinkedIn and uh, it's on, uh, on a meetup group as well. Yeah, so uh, social media, Manitoba, tweet up, meet up, LinkedIn, any of those kind of things uh, should should uh, bring it up in Google. So there we go. Great information about the social media, Manitoba, tweet up, meet up at Tavern United in the MTS Center, March 9th, 6 p.m. If you're there and I'm and you see me, <laughs> see you there. Hey, folks, number one from Brothers 3 here at the Winnipeg Humane Society. Looks like someone left the kitty making machine on overnight, and now we are at a catastrophe on our hands. So come on down to the Winnipeg Humane Society for Kitty Midnight Madness. Yes, it's Winnipeg's own Andy Hill, teamed up to promote the Winnipeg Humane Society. Together, they made a light and funny video called Kitty Midnight Madness, which you can find by searching on YouTube. I found the video myself at the end of January while looking for Winnipeg businesses that had channels on YouTube. If you've got one, stop by my channel and leave a message so I can check it out. Having this podcast gave me the idea to contact the Winnipeg Humane Society, hoping to be able to interview someone about the catchy viral video. And I'm pleased to say that I got to talk to Aileen White, the one who dreamed up the video in the first place and the one who coordinated it all. Here's what Aileen had to say about the video and the experience of putting it together. Uh, the interesting thing about it is that, um, I mean, we work with really streamlined marketing budget. I mean, an exceptionally streamlined marketing budget because, you know, I often say to people, you can't ask for your five or ten dollars a month, which is, a you know, a big commitment for many, many families and then turn around and spend thousands on marketing. It was always made for the, the, the purpose of, of hopefully going viral. And um, how did it start? We wanted to do. Uh, I'm very interested in social media. We're, we're quite involved with that, the Humane Society, for much to the extent of the capacity that we can handle. Like, we have a really successful Facebook page. We're very involved with that. And we have all these little tiny videos that we do. But I was wanting something that would present um, cats in a different way, in the not the depressed uh, cat overpopulation, which is a very serious issue. I mean, mostly when you talk about cats, it's in this very – serious manner because it truly there are so many serious consequences of it because of cattle population and spay and neuter which is very unsexy so how do you talk about cats in this kind of fun way um and we knew that we wanted to kind of do a uh, a sales many a salesman ish um kind of that shtick uh we knew that we wanted to do something about with that in mind and um and then what i and i knew that i, I wanted it to be more um I knew that I wanted it to be successful and I knew that that was bigger than me. So I, <laughs> I knew that I needed to bring in the pearls. So I, uh, what I did is I contacted Shelly Jesso who, who I've worked with on and off over the years since I first got in, into the industry. And she used to be CTV. She was a producer with CTV and, and now she's not, she's with the Canadian Weep Board, but she, um, she, she jumped on board. She's a huge cat lover and she's a humane society supporter. And so I basically shared with her my idea and I said, you know, how do I, how do I make this work? And can you be a part of making this work? And, uh, and, and, and we kind of brainstormed and she knew that that was a f open creativity. So it was open season for being cheeky or naughty or 
whatever, that it wasn't kind of the dry business that we, we didn't want to be disrespectful, but we definitely wanted to be cheeky and fun. So, um, and so that was really, that was really where it started was with, um, with Shelly and I, um, she jumped on board right away. I mean, I'm, I'm very lucky because each person we went to to say, can you help? They did help. So Shelly was exceptionally instrumental in this. She then is the one who found the shooter who, um, who's an, an incredibly talented gentleman, Dave, um, Godette. And he, he actually shoots for discovery channel. And I mean, he's just, I mean, a true pro. And then seriously, he came on board and did this by donating his time as well. And then we have an editor who ha- has to remain unknown because <laughs> of job uh, security reasons. But he he also is a professional editor and he came on board. And so and this is why it took a long time to actually turn around the first germ of an idea. But essentially, the first germ of the idea when Shelley and I were were, were talking um, you know, I shared with her the concept about the salesman idea, and I, it would be really cool if we could get somebody who, who not an actor, because we we're like, should it be an actor? Should it be, you know, like do we do we kind of like schlep it up that way, or do we do we do we ask somebody else? And it was in so we you know so Andy Hill's name was definitely the top of the list. Um, the only name on the list, to be quite honest, it was kind of hysterical because there was no list. And and so I contacted him. And, and honestly, I was nervous about contact because I thought what he's going to be like, what the heck are you contacting me for? I mean, this, you know, you know, because it was so out of out of, you know, that left field. I mean, you know, did he even, you know, like cats like did, it was even animal. Flower. Like, I had no idea. So I contacted him and, and I explained what was going on. And, and he was so patient. Because it truly took a long time to turn around to actually then, I mean, when did I first contact him? Honest to goodness, I think it was last spring, like maybe June. And then we didn't shoot for months. It was horrible because to try and then get Dave lined up because he scheduled, literally, he, he was all of a sudden in town one minute and then whisked off to Alaska to film blah, blah. You know, like it was just, it was ridiculous to try and really manage the schedule. I couldn't imagine that the Humane Society spent a lot of cash on the video. So I asked Aileen about the people who worked on the project. Uh, The interesting thing about it is that, um, I mean, we work with really streamlined marketing budget. I mean, an exceptionally streamlined marketing budget because, you know, I often say to people, you can't ask for your five or ten dollars a month, which is a, you know, a big commitment for many, many families and then turn around and spend thousands on marketing. Um, It's perceivably really um, irresponsible, I think, when you're dealing with over 9,000 animals a year. So it was... um, you know, that's why I really like to make it um, clear um, that we had these fantastic volunteers, but also that it wasn't, it was something that I was kind of dreaming about. So it's not like part of my job objective of the year was to create a crazy viral video. I myself have never had a video that's gone viral, but I've spent a number of years now watching the ones that do go viral and asking myself questions about them. So it was great to be able to talk to Aileen and hear about the initial distribution of this video. We didn't introduce it per se. We sent it on mass and asked certain people of ours that we know who are really connected in certain places, like in like, you know, somebody that we know in New York, for example, got it on delisted. And so there was a few... Um, in that way, but we didn't, and we contacted shows. I mean, I would love if Ellen noticed it because I love Ellen DeGeneres, and I think that would be so cool. I'd be like, yeah, like, I'd be thrilled at that. But you know, I I would imagine that they're inundated with with videos and and clever ideas and you know and and funny Facebook profile pictures that they're not going to see our message for a long time. But we did heavily rely on the list of contacts that we have and our Facebook and having them help distribute it so it was mostly through that okay so this viral video isn't like the fred figglehorn one i mentioned in my video on youtube about the benefits of applying to become a youtube partner fred stuff was originally uploaded as a joke for friends and then inadvertently caught on in a crazy way but the quality of the first video his first video reflected that pla- lack of real planning and it's easy to tell from the quality of the winnipeg humane society video that there was a lot more planning I asked Aileen to tell me more about the planning process, and she told me about how she introduced the concept in the management meetings. Um, it was really just between Shelley and I. I. I didn't tell anybody. I mean, Bill honestly did not know what the actual specifics. Like in the in the management meetings, when I present that I'm I'm going to be working on this video, la la la. It's very cheeky to try and garner that support to say. 
I'm going about this in a bit of a different way. Just please, please know, please trust me to come along for the ride. I, I remember showing Bill the video um, in my office, uh, the first touch, and we didn't do much. The editor did such a phenomenal job right from the get-go. It's not like we had to do much tweaking. But, um, and I remember showing Bill thinking, okay, is he going to be like, whoa, whoa this is not going to fly with the bunch of directors. Aileen, this is completely far too, you know, naughty. Um, but you know what? He was bent over laughing. So he, he, because he has a tremendous spirit. We have, you know, what what we may like personally and what we feel is representative of, two, of an organization are two different things. But um, no, he was he thought this was really great fun. And 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 really what then the fallout of that or so many people saying how that represent represents cats in such a new way, a new enlightened and fun way instead of the, you know, poor little scrappy on the street suffering, which is, is horrific and true. You know, that is the reality, all far too common, but you know, but it doesn't make it kind of fun to come down and adopt. So now, of course, the natural question is, is there going to be a follow-up video? Is Aileen from the Winnipeg Humane Society going to be responsible for helping extend another Winnipegger's celebrity status throughout the world? Um, no, there are no plans, to be quite honest, but it doesn't mean that there won't be a plan. Um, I know it's quite funny. I think we probably have to get through this and then figure out part de, so to speak. So if you haven't already seen the Kitty Madness video, I invite you to go on to YouTube. Go to youtube.com slash WinnipegHS and it should be on their channel there. Of course, make sure you subscribe and leave some comments and some thumbs up and give them some local Winnipeg support. Well, that about wraps it up for the third episode of the Social Media in Central Canada podcast here from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Before I go, I'd like to also suggest that if you're into social media and you're looking for videos to watch that are social media-esque, great, a great place to start is with the Livestream.com Social Media Week footage that came from uh, early February. If you go to Livestream.com slash Social Media Week, all one word, there are more videos there than you could probably watch in three or four weeks. I challenge you. Also, please definitely drop by my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash thewebgirl with two R's. And I have videos there myself, which are to help you with your social media presence, to answer some basic questions, to answer some advanced questions, and to also just give you some things to think about. I'd really love to connect with more people. So if you heard this podcast and you'd like to leave some comments or some questions, you can drop by my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash thewebgirl, or you can contact me on Twitter, with the web girl you can come to webgirlenterprises.com or to my new website which is webgirl.tv which is where i'm going to be uh, hosting a whole bunch of interviews for winnipeg freelancers and some general winnipeg and worldwide things that interest me i'd love to see you there and i'd love to talk to you take care see you next episode